This is the second section of chapter three, Flows in Networks One, and this section is about cuts and their capacities. So here's an example of a capacitated directed network digraph. And uh, what I can do is draw a line that cuts across some of these edges. So let's say I draw something like this, okay, that cuts across edge SA and SB. And I can calculate something called the capacity of this cut. Now, the capacity of a cut is the sum of all of the capacities flowing in to the cut. So we're not interested in um, arcs or capacities which are flowing out of it, but just into it. So if I look at this cut here, its capacity would be 29, 14 plus 15. So if I called this cut C1, it would have a capacity of 14 plus 15, which is 29. If I drew another cut here, I wanted to work out the capacity of this cut. All the flows flowing into it are going to be, uh, they call this C2, 8 plus 4 plus 7 plus 9. So this has a capacity of 28. If I've done my mass right, 8 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 9 is 17. Uh, sorry, 19 plus 9, yep, 28. And then if I did one more cut, let's say uh, across here. So let's do this in the highlighter pen. So let's say I did one like this and I wanted to work out the capacity of this cut. Let's call this C3. So again, only the capacities which are flowing into it. That would be 8 plus 6. 6 is flowing into it and 16 is flowing into it so we don't include the ones which are flowing out so 8 plus 6 that's going to be 14 14 plus 16 that's going to be 30 so this last cut here has a capacity of 30. so just to reiterate we don't include the capacities of the arcs leaving the cut only those going into the cut now, sometimes it can be sort of difficult to visualize what's going in or out of the cut. So what may be helpful sometimes is actually to think of these cuts uh, that we have as pipes being cut. And where you cut the pipe, you're going to get a puddle of water. So we can draw behind the cut, let's say for this first cut C1 here, a puddle of water. And then from that, we can work out, well, what? what pipes are going into that to create that puddle of water. So I can see well the 14 and 15, where these pipes have been cut. So it gives me the cut of 29. So it doesn't matter where it is. So for example, I could do the same uh, with the second cut C2 and just draw this puddle that gets created from cutting the pipes. And then I can say to myself, right, what pipes are going into that to make that puddle of water well this one is that's making the water that one there this one here this one here and then i can see right the ones that are contributing to the capacity of this cut are going to be the eight four seven and nine um, so we can do the same thing here and same thing with the last cut and do the same thing so imagine like a puddle of water being created because the pipes have been cut, what water is going into that cut, which pipes. So this one, this one, the eight, the six, and the 16. So again, gives us the same capacity as before. So use that method um, if you're not 100% sure, or you can just use it all the time to find the capacity of a cut. Example four. The diagram shows the capacitated directed network. The number on each arc represents the capacity of that arc, determine of the value of the cuts C3 and C4, sorry, C4 and C5. So we'll start with C4. And we're going to use this um, puddle 
method. So we'll draw the puddle of water that's been created by the pipes that have been cut, which pipes are the ones going into that puddle of water. Well, there's this one here, 14. Um, now this one's coming out, so that's not going to contribute to the capacity of that cut. And then this one here and this one here. So we just basically look at the, the pipes going into it. So C4 is going to be 14 plus 7 is 21 plus 9. So that's going to be capacity of 30. Then we'll look at cut C5. So this is where this puddle idea on C5 is going to be helpful um, because it can be tricky to work out otherwise. So we'll draw a little puddle of water that's here. And then from that, we can sort of clearly see which pipes are going in to create that puddle. So there's the 15 here and the three and the four. Now we might be tempted if we didn't draw the puddle method, we may be tempted to put this six, but the six isn't going into the puddle, is it? It's actually coming out. And the other one there is the 11. So the capacity of that cup is going to be 15 plus 3 plus 4 plus 11. And that will give me a value of 33. Example 5. The diagram shows a capacitated directing network. The number on each arc represents the capacity of that arc. Numbers in the circles represent an initial flow pattern. Calculate the value of the cut C1 and C2. So just a little reminder here that we use capacities, not flows. And I suppose the clue is here. It does say the capacity of that arc. So we're using the capacities, right? So A, uh, oh, there is no part A. It's just cut one. So cut one, we're going to draw a little puddle behind it like this and I suppose really all I need is like the edge part so I can see what's flowing into that I don't need to color the whole thing in and I've got a flow in here I've got two flows in here um, and a flow in here okay the others are outflows so that's a flow out that can doesn't tribute anything so uh, the flows in or the capacities in are 10 at the top. Then I have eight and 14, eight plus 14, those two close ones in the middle. And then at the bottom I have 10, so plus 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20. Uh, 20 plus 14 is going to be 34. 34 plus eight is going to be 42. So I get a um value of that cut as 42 so that's for c1 right so we're now going to do the same thing for c2 so we're going to get rid of our puddle get rid of the arrows and start again and we'll draw our puddle behind c2 like this and sort of just do the edge part here because I'm just interested in what's flowing into it at the edge like this and I'll draw little red arrows to show what's flowing in okay so there's a 9 flowing in there there's a 14 flowing in here uh, that 4 is flowing out here yeah, it's flowing out but that 7 is flowing in there and the 6 is flowing in and the 7 is flowing in so my total capacity is 9 plus 14 plus 7 plus 6 plus 7 and then that gives a total value of that cut as 43 so you can see this puddle method is quite useful it's quite helpful So you should now be able to do exercise 3B on pages 83 to 85.